if you don't eat enough protein, you lose everything. Okay, not really. That's definitely not the case. In fact, that's why I'm doing this video. In fact, if you're someone that works out a lot, I've got some crazy news for you in the later part of this video where I'm gonna explain that someone that works out quite a bit actually needs less protein. And I'll make some sense of that in just a couple of minutes. But basically what this video is about is about attaining that positive nitrogen balance. You see, the reason that we're supposed to eat enough protein when we're working out is because we are supposed to have this positive nitrogen balance. This nitrogen balance is what keeps us from going into that catabolic state where we break down muscle tissue. Now, in order to understand exactly what nitrogen is and how that works in the body, I have to explain what kind of atoms food has to begin with. You see, proteins, fats, and carbs all contain hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. That's kind of a given. That's just general food matter. But proteins are the only food sources that contain nitrogen. And we need to have enough nitrogen to attain certain bodily functions, certain hormone production, certain organ function. We need that protein. Now, when we look at proteins, we have to look at amino acids. So it's important to understand that we have two different kinds of amino acids that are coming into the body. We've got essential amino acids, which just like the name implies, they're essential. We need to get them from the diet because our bodies don't create them. They are literally essential to function of life. Then we have non-essential amino acids. They're still important, but they're called non-essential because the body has a way of creating them. It can synthesize them on their own. But we need to make sure that we're getting quality, complete proteins, which means all of the essential and the non-essential amino acids in order to get us in to that positive nitrogen balance. Okay, so let's talk about the protein requirements because this is a big one. Okay, every single bodybuilding magazine, every fitness magazine, heck, even the female fitness magazines will tell you that you need a lot of protein. Some of the bodybuilding magazines even go so far as telling you that you need like two to three grams of protein per pound of body weight. In my opinion, that's a lot. And I like to go on research, I like to go on science, and that's everything you're gonna see in this video is all based on that. Okay, because we have to look at what we need just to attain that positive nitrogen balance. So when it comes down to it, we can actually measure the nitrogen within our body. And it's done so relatively easily. In fact, there's these urine testing strips that are everywhere and they're not even that expensive where you can test your nitrogen balance. So let's talk about the three different outcomes that you can have. You can have a positive nitrogen balance. What that means is you're consuming enough protein that your body is able to extract the nitrogen that it needs in order to maintain that positive balance. At this rate, you can synthesize protein, you can potentially build muscle, you can tone up, you can get more density to your muscle. That's a good thing, but you don't need to be this astronomically positive number here. Okay, then the next one is of course going to be the negative nitrogen balance. That negative nitrogen balance, just like the name implies, you aren't getting enough protein. So your body is in a deficit of nitrogen. So what's it gonna do at that point? You see what your body's gonna do when it's in that nitrogen deficit is it's gonna to start to pull it from your tissues. It's gonna pull it from your muscle. That's when you go into that catabolic state. That's when you start breaking down that precious muscle tissue that you've worked so hard to build. And I don't care if you're male, female, yellow, orange, black, blue, whatever. If you have a negative nitrogen balance, you're breaking down muscle tissue. And that muscle tissue is imperative to healthy metabolism. It's imperative for fat mobilization. It's imperative for good, healthy energy and of course, bone structure. I don't need to go down that road. Okay, then the last outcome is simply equilibrium. These nitrogen testings can tell you if you're having just enough nitrogen, you're getting just enough protein, you're synthesizing enough where your body is maybe just slightly positive or right where it needs to be to have harmonious function of all its organs and to be able to build muscle without too much protein coming in. You can guess where I would recommend that you be. Now it's important to note that one of the biggest reasons that people go into a negative nitrogen balance isn't because they're not consuming enough protein. It's usually because they're overtraining and they're overstressed. When our cortisol levels go up, it definitely can make it so our bodies want to break down muscle tissue to achieve a little bit more of the nitrogen it needs for proper hormone, proper adrenal, and proper organ function. So pay attention to your overtraining, and I've done videos on overtraining before, so you can look at that, how it directly affects salivary cortisol levels right then and there. So you're all here because you wanna know the tricks. You wanna know how much protein. You, know, you watch this video because you, you trust my advice when it comes to a lot of other methods and a lot of other health topics. So let's talk about what you can do. Okay, the first one is obvious. Get complete proteins. 
And the reason I say this isn't to talk to the fitness people that are watching this. It's not to talk to the bodybuilders, not to talk to the muscle heads that understand that you need a lot of protein and understand what a complete protein is. But this is more so geared towards those that may not understand that we need to get those essential and non-essential amino acids in order to maintain that positive nitrogen balance. You see, if we eat vegetables or if we eat carbohydrates that are only getting us part of the nitrogen that we need or only part of the amino acids, then our body isn't able to synthesize that protein all the way and it isn't able to extract that nitrogen. We need that complete profile, which means even if you're eating protein but it's not complete, then it's gonna pull partial amino acids out of your muscle and still break it down. Okay, the next component, another really important one that kind of goes without saying, it's rest. You see, we synthesize protein when we're resting. When we're in the gym, we're breaking stuff down. That's not when it's happening. You see, when we're actually resting is when that protein is doing its job and it's synthesizing. And when it's synthesizing is when we are able to extract that nitrogen and maintain that positive nitrogen balance that we need. So get adequate rest. Make sure you're reducing that inflammation by resting and letting your cortisol levels go down. Again, overtraining a huge, huge contributor to why we have a negative nitrogen balance. And now the shocker. The shocker being the fact that when you work out, you might not need as much protein as when you don't. This is crazy, right? Okay, well think about this. When you work out, your body becomes super efficient at synthesizing protein. It gets used to it. It knows how to synthesize it because it's efficient. So what that means is you can essentially synthesize more protein from a lesser amount. When you synthesize more protein from a lesser amount, well, then you've got excess protein laying around, which means you're gonna go into that positive nitrogen balance a lot easier. It all comes down to efficiency. Whereas someone that doesn't work out as much, their body needs more protein to try to be able to actually metabolize and synthesize that better. Now, this doesn't mean that if you're training hard and you're trying to build a lot of muscle and put on gobs of tissue, that you don't need excess protein because you do. But if you're active, you're working out, you'd be surprised that your protein requirements are sometimes less than they are more. So how much protein exactly do you need? Okay, I'm not a doctor, but I can tell you what the research suggests. The research does suggest that if we have too much protein, it can start to trigger inflammation. And if you know me, you know that I'm big on keeping that out of the picture. And the studies are showing that if you're a strength athlete, you should be consuming about 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. That translates to about 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight. It's a heck of a lot less than the three grams per pound that some of the other publications will suggest. Okay, now if you're an endurance athlete, that number's a little bit smaller. If you're an endurance athlete, it's suggested that you need about 1.1 grams per kilogram or 0.5 grams per pound. Not nearly as much as people really think. Lastly, be data-driven. Don't just go on bro science. Don't just trust everything that's out there on the internet. If you can afford to get some nitrogen testing kits and test your urine nitrogen levels, do it because it's always gonna change. That way you don't have to stick to this dictated plan that's gonna tell you exactly how much protein. You can fluctuate that based on what you need. You are unique, we all have different DNA, we all have different needs, and we have to abide by what our body is asking of us. So as always, if you ever have any curiosity, any questions, anything you wanna post up in the comments below, do so and I'll be sure to get a response to you, or I'll just produce a video that answers a multitude of questions. But as always, keep it locked in here on my videos for everything that you want that's research-backed that can help you make the right decision to do what's best for your body without me telling you specifically what to do. All right, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you soon.